The impedance converter op amp gyrator circuit shown here is designed with two op amps and five impedances Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, Z5. We want to show that when measured at input port, the input impedance Zn, as you can see, is equal to Z1 times Z3 times Z5 in numerator and then divide by Z2 times Z4 in denominator. This is very interesting relationship. If we can prove it, it enables a versatile impedance converter because if for example for instance if we set these four impedances to all resistors let's say then and just z4 as a cap for instance then we end up with z in equal to uh, some total resistive value or some some let's say constant that is defined by the resistors and then divide by for z4 i have 1 over cs which means it become k times cs so effectively with that setup the input impedance feels as if we have virtually an inductor so what i'm trying to say is with proper value of these five impedances we can realize capacitor to inductor converter like the one that i showed you or we can realize a capacitor multiplier or even impedance multiplier in general so there are many possibilities that can be realized by this circuit at the core of this circuit effectively is a gyrator by that i mean we can show that vn if V in is applied, then V in is related to say if the current I2 at the second port is defined like this, then V in is equal to minus I2 times ZL. The interesting thing is I am relating the input voltage, voltage at port 1, to the current and impedance at port 2. So that is the property of gyrator. This is a special case of gyrator because, uh, because of the wiring that we have is not the general case of gyrator, but at its core there is a gyration going on. So now let's uh, try to figure out why we have this relation. All right, to find the input impedance, one of the best ways would be apply a test voltage like Vn, and then because of that Vn, there is a current that flows through the circuit I in, let's say I1, that I need to find it. Then by dividing these two values, I can find Zn. Okay, so let's proceed. Let's make the assumption that op amps are properly biased. So let's say the plus minus uh, VDD and uh, minus VDD, or let's say plus minus 10 volt, 5 volt are properly applied for both op amps. Also, let's make the assumption that the negative feedback is dominant. So you can see that the output of op amp connected to uh, input negative terminal. So we make the assumption that is dominant for both op amps. Therefore, I can say that the op amps are in linear region of operation, not saturated. So with that assumption, I'm going to write here in summary. So in summary, uh, op amps are properly biased. Properly biased and in, in with dominant negative feedback. So and in linear re operating in linear region operating in linear region and therefore because of these reasonable assumptions of course we need to make sure that circuit is designed and implemented in a compact fashion and op amps are matching so with that in mind then I can say virtual short is valid for both op amps and it means that the voltage at positive and voltage at negative terminal matching so that matters to me reason for that is V in is applied at the input of the circuit Therefore, via this wire, V in appears at the positive terminal, and because of virtual short, V in should be at the negative terminal as well. Then it is at this node, which means V in is at negative terminal of this op amp, which again, because of overall negative feedback, appears at the positive terminal here. And therefore, in this special circuit with the special wiring we have, the voltage at the second port, V2, or let's say, just uh, yeah v2 v2 is equal to which is here because the other the other side is grounded so v2 in this special circuit is just equal to vn the property of wiring uh, two op amps in the circuit now with that in mind let's uh, study the voltage drop across these impedances so we have plus minus vz2 across this impedance we have plus minus vz1 across this impedance with the polarities i'm showing this i1 that is coming in it can only go through the z1 because no current can flow through the input impedance of uh, ideal op amp because it has practically in infinite impedance therefore i1 has to keep going through z1 
At the same time, there is a current, let's say, uh, we refer to this as IZ1 as well. So uh, let's refer to this current as IZ2 going through the Z2. Now, take a look at what we have across these two impedances. On one side, there is, there is one common node that is shared for, uh, between Z, Z1 and Z2. On the other side, both of them, they have voltage Vn, see? So therefore, that means Vz1 should be equal to Vz2 with the polarity that I have shown here. So I'm going to write it, Vz1 equal to Vz2 as a result. I have Iz1 times Z1 equal to Iz2 times Z2. Of course, Iz1 is equal to I1. So just to simplify it, I can write I1 Z1 equal to Iz2 times Z2. OK, so let's keep this. Now, uh, at the same time, this IZ2 cannot pr uh, go through the input terminals of the op-amp. So the only way is for IZ2 actually come through Z3. So IZ3 is equal to IZ2. So I'm going to write it here. IZ3 has to be equal to IZ2. OK, what else I can say? The same situation in between Z3 and Z4 as we observed between Z1 and Z2, meaning that on uh, there is a common node between them, that is the output node of op amp number 2. And for the other two nodes, we can see that V in is here on one side of Z3, and V in is also there on the other side of Z4. Therefore, if I define the polarity of the voltage drop across these two guys, for example, like this Vz3, and Vz4. Then these two voltage drops should be the same. So I'm going to write it here. So I'm going to say, uh, I, so I can say Vz3 equal to Vz4, which means Iz3 equal to Iz3 times Z3 equal to Iz4 times Z4. Okay, uh, I have this that I, this, this relationship that I just said before, IZ3 is equal to IZ2 with the direction shown. At the same time, IZ4, because no current can flow through the input terminal again of the ideal op amp, therefore you can see that IZ4 should be equal to negative I2 the, because of the direction. So I'm going to write it here. IZ4 is equal to negative I2. Okay, so I'm going to substitute then here. So using the ones that I showed you, I'm going to substitute IZ3 with IZ2 because of this. So IZ2 times Z3 equal to, and IZ4, I'm going to substitute with uh, negative I2. So negative I2, which means the current of the second port, times Z4. Okay, what is the benefit of this? Uh, the benefit is I can now um, define. I can now define this, and uh, I'm going to put it this way: I Z two equal to minus Z four over Z three times I two. So let's refer to this as equation two because. I want to refer to this as equation 1. So I'm going to combine equation 1 and 2. And uh, uh, IZ1, of course, in equation 1 is simply just uh, the current through Z1 is simply I1. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just write I1 for that. So let me just make sure that this thing is OK. So, so I'm going to write I1 times Z1 equal to, so I'm going to, uh, I am just writing this equation and substituting for values. IZ1 is now I1, and IZ2 is coming from equation 2. So equal to minus Z4 divided by Z3 times I2, and then there is the Z2 that I should not forget. So times Z2. Great. So let's just uh, rewrite it. What I got is this. I1 
is equal to minus z2 z4 divide by z1 z3 i2 great but then <coughs> the voltage v2 across the voltage v2 across z5 has a very clear relationship with i2 because i2 is flowing with this direction through the z5 it caused a voltage drop like this so obviously this indicate that let me change the color okay indicates that v2 is minus i2 times z5 again the reason for negative sign is because the direction of i2 and uh, because of that direction the polarity of the voltage drop that it result it causes which is counter the polarity of the v2 assumed uh, so therefore I'm gonna refer to this as equation 3 and then I'm gonna substitute it for i2 uh, using equation 3 so I am I am therefore able to write um, here i1 equal to minus z2 z4 divide by z1 z3 and then for i2 I am writing minus v2 divide by minus v2 divide by z5 just obtain i2 as a function of v2 from equation 3 okay almost done uh, we know that from equation 4 v2 is equal to vn so I am going to therefore use equation 4 and write i1 equal to uh, I can cancel out these two negative signs so therefore becomes just z2 z4 divide by z1 z3 z5 vn and we are done because we said z in is v in divided by i1 so if i just reshuffle things around v in divide i can say z in is equal to v in divided by i1 which is according to this z1 times z3 times z5 divided by z2 times z4 and that's exactly what we what we were we were trying to prove in this circuit which is true so this is truly an impedance converter a versatile impedance, impedance converter so depending on uh, what we set for the value of these five impedances we can realize different scenarios and as I showed you uh, in this case I showed that the voltage here in port 2 becomes equal to v in and therefore v in is as as shown here is a function of the current in the second port and the impedance in the second port as shown in equation number three so uh, therefore a gyration and gyrator core uh, used in a special circumstance or case I hope that this example is helpful to highlight that how we can realize uh, an example of impedance converter of course there are many ways that impedance converters can be realized but this is one example and uh, uh, as, as, I, as I showed by proper selection of these values you can we can realize a capacitor to inductor converter basically from the perspective of input port we can realize a virtual inductor uh, between the, the two terminals of this input port I hope that this example is helpful.